Hi, my name's Steve. A few months ago, 13 months ago actually, I did a review of these Shottis white blinds. I've lived with them now for 13 months and I'm really pleased with them. But I have a use for blackout blinds. I have a, an idea that I need some blackout blinds. So what I've done, I've bought one of the blackout versions of these Shottis blinds from Ikea. And I'm going to hang it here on the end of the run of these blinds so that uh, later on in the day when the sun's over the other side here and it's shining through, we can compare them and see whether they're truly blackout and how they compare in terms of fitting and in use with these white blinds, which I'm impressively pleased with. So in the course of this video, I'll show you how to cut them accurately to size and how easy they are to hang. The only complication there's going to be is that this end blind, I've got three in a row here, I'm going to try and tuck up out of the way because I don't want to lose it. <laughs> Although it wouldn't be the end of the world if I had to replace it. any further let's have a quick look at what's supplied with the blinds with each blind on the top there's a paper strip which gives you some instructions for fitting and they tell you you can use this strip for cutting and measuring the width that you need to cut to it comes with two plastic clips for those of you that saw my video on fitting the white blinds, you'll know that I wasn't hugely impressed by them. These are larger than the original white clips. And I think, I'm pretty sure they're a little bit thicker as well. Uh, one of the problems with these white clips was that um, they snapped. Uh, there's a little strip of Velcro. So the process of fitting and the system is exactly the same by the look of it. And then you have the blind itself. And on one side of the blind, there's nothing. That's the bottom of the blind. And on the other side, there's double-sided tape, sticky tape with a white backing. And you have to peel that backing back to expose the sticky uh, tape there. The difference between this one and the white blinds is that this is much wider. This is about 25 mil. The sticky tape on the white blinds is only about 15 mil. And I think the reason for that is that these, this, this blind is heavier. And it's heavier because, let me turn it round, on one side, the inside of the blind, it's a very attractive grey, dark grey colour. Looks really nice. But on the other side, on the outside, it's shiny black, it's got a coating. So that shiny black side is what you will see from the outside of the window. So later on when I've put these up, I'll go out and film it from the outside and show you what it looks like. That's a bit of a surprise because it doesn't mention that, as far as I can recall, on the website. It certainly doesn't show it in any of the pictures. So bear in mind if you're going to buy these that they have a shiny black outside surface and if that bothers you in terms of appearance then you probably need to think of something else so we're going to cut these to size and you're going to need a few simple tools you need a piece of wood in my view just to lay the blinds on top of for when you're cutting them now the instructions tell you to cut the blinds using scissors let me just check that's true. Uh, they're telling you to cut the blinds using a craft knife. I think that's a bad idea. A much better idea is to use a really sharp kitchen knife. And I'll show you that in action in just a second. So you need a piece of wood, you need a sharp kitchen knife, and you need a metal square. And it also helps to have a pencil. But that's true of life in general, isn't it? <laughs> now, I've measured the blind and it's 
855 and I'm just going to use a tape measure. I don't see any reason to use that piece of card. I'm going to mark that off at 855. Double check, measure twice and cut once is the rule. 855. Now our square comes into action. First thing I'm going to do is mark across here with a nice square line. Bring the blind up to the edge of the timber and bring the timber up to the edge of your table so you can put your square on the top of the blind compressing the blind down and holding the whole thing nice and tight and what we're going to do we're going to have a practice run let's just cut the end off of it okay have a practice run yourself before you do this so mark your nice straight pencil line your square straight pencil line across the top put the square down on top of the blind make sure everything's nice and true and then get your table knife carefully across your pencil line and simply saw it backwards and forwards gently don't put any pressure on it just let the sharpness of the knife cut the blind Look how easy that is. No drama, no fiddling. Nice, accurate cut when you get down to the wood. You can cut through the wood. Now, I've actually cut offline there. As you can see, I've come away from the thing, but that's not a problem. Just simply use your knife and shave it down square again. See the little slivers coming off. And there we are. Really nice straight square cut. So let's do it for real this time. This time. Making sure that I follow the square down. And there you are. A lovely square cut. And what it won't do is do that all the way down. So that's cut to length. Now all we have to do is hang it. So I'm just going to move my table and I'm going to hoik that white blind up out of the way and then we'll put this in place and drop it down and have a look. So I've rolled my third blind up, the existing blind up, out of the way. We simply peel off the double sided tape leaving the sticky back bit there. Make sure that you've got the glossy side facing outwards. And what I'm going to do, I'm just simply going to hold that at either end, offer it up in place and stick it against the existing top of the existing blind, which is different from what you'll be doing. You'll be sticking it up to probably a UPVC frame, the actual plastic, or uh, a painted wooden a window frame and if you're doing that make sure you clean it off first with a bit of meths and um, a, a bit of tissue paper don't use white spirit white spirit actually leaves a very slight residue of oil on the surface so using meths just clean that surface off before you do this process
Now, <coughs> if you're doing this straight from sort of new, I suggest you make a couple of pencil marks on the frame to give you your levels through. And then you simply drop that down. Now, when I fitted the white blinds, which are the same size, they're 190 by one meter is the fixed size. They drop down on their own without it, the need for anything to hold them down. But I'm going to just use a couple of stone ornaments I've got just to hold them in place. And there we are. Now the kit comes with some Velcro, a Velcro strip. And the idea is that you cut the Velcro strip into three and you stick it on the bottom run of your blind and stick that to the frame, the window frame. I've in the past used that with these white ones and I don't like that idea. And what will happen is that over time, quite quickly, this blind will drop, it will stretch and you won't need to put any weight on the bottom of it. And of course you can use the Velcro strips if you like. If you want to see how that's done, I mean, it's a fairly simple thing, but if you want to see how it's done, look at my first video uh, about fitting these white shottist blinds. But this is a nice grey colour. I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised by the inside colour of these. I thought they were going to be black, but they're actually a sort of slate grey. And they look really attractive. So what we do now, we'll wait until the sun is round the other side of the blinds. At the moment there's lots of cloud about so we might be unlucky today and see the light coming through. But with the backing on them, the uh, shiny backing, I'm pretty confident that these are going to be totally light proof. Um, I'll use this off cut strip and you can actually see how shiny it is. It's like a plastic coating. And what I'll do now, I'm going to go take the camera outside and have a look at them from the outside looking in. Um, let's see what that looks like. So there you are, that's the back of the shottest blackout blind. It's not the most attractive finish I've ever seen. It's a bit glossy and plasticky looking, which is a bit of a shame. So I think if you're worried about what it looks like from the outside, then perhaps you better think of another type of blind to use. So that was the view from the outside. And so I think from the inside, they look really smart. I mean, seriously smart. Let's see how they work with these clips. I'm quite interested. When I first did the, my first video, I didn't know how these worked and I thought they didn't work, but they actually do work, these little clips. Um, and I have a suspicion that the folding up of these blinds, these blackout blinds, is going to be a lot easier than the folding up of the um, that way. So what you do is, if you if you hold the clip upwards like that, there's a really good video by a lady, an American lady, who showed me how to do this, and I'll put a link in the info box down below. But basically, you hold the clip upwards like that, and the little bit, the little letterbox bit at the, the middle, goes on the top, and the other bit goes on the bottom, and that bit clips up behind behind the bunched up frame to hold it. So, and I have to say, I have to say that that's working really well and feels really firm and really quite easy to do. Because the blind is stiffer, um, these are folding up without flopping all over the place. So I think they work really well. Completely revised opinion about them compared to the white ones. All we've got to do now is wait for the sun to get around behind these and compare them to see how light 
uh, proof they are, but my suspicion is they're totally like. Well, you can already see there's no light coming through this one, I don't think. But I suddenly had a sudden thought while we're waiting for the sun to come over, I've got a lead lens, a torch, which, if any of you know lead lens, you'll notice a really powerful torch with masses of light there. And um, what I'm going to do is go around the other side and walk along shining it. Just assuage my curiosity. There you go. What happened? <laughs> I was on the other side, I can't see. <laughs> I can check the film now. Well, luckily the sun's bursting out. It's over the top there, shining through the blinds. You can see it's shining through here, and you come along. Absolutely no light coming through at all. Um, truly blackout. So, what do I think of the Shottis blackout shades? I think they're really good. I think they do the job. They're a bit stiffer and heavier than the white version. And I think on the whole that's an advantage because you will be able to fold these up much easier than you can the white ones if you would just want to have them half up or half down or right the way up. And I think, I think they're that easy to use like that that you could almost use them on a daily basis which I certainly wouldn't recommend with these white ones. I think the white ones are there to be left in place personally. I wouldn't bother with the Velcro on the bottom. I found the Velcro looked untidy and unsightly on the white ones. And it also had a tendency to tear the bottom of the blind. But I don't think that's necessary. I think, as I say, once these are hung for a while, they'll simply naturally drop to the um, the window ledge, or you can just use, as I'm doing here temporarily, a couple of heavy weights, a couple of heavy ornaments, to hold them down temporarily until that happens. They're easy to fit, easy to cut. You can see the method of cutting that I use using the knife gives you nice, straight, clean cuts. And fitting on the top is easy, it's just as easy as the white ones. As I said before in the video, if you're fitting to any sort of frame, uh, wipe it down with some meths first, just to degrease it and get it clean. That way you'll know that the stick is as good as it's going to get. The Shottis blinds at the moment, I paid £5.50 for this. The white blinds are £3.50. So you have to make a judgment call as to whether you want light coming through your blinds. For example, in here in a conservatory, it's what you want in an office uh, or a workspace, you want some light coming through, or you want the absolute blackout of the blackout blinds. Far more suitable for a bedroom, I would have thought. So there we are. I hope you've enjoyed watching this and I hope it's of some use to you. Uh, if you did enjoy it, please give me a thumbs up. <laughs> and if you want to see more product reviews, and I do lots of uh, videos about stone crafting and stone carving, if you'd like to see those, please subscribe to the channel. Because uh, it's subscribers that make a channel, truthfully. Um, and leave some feedback on the bottom on comments. If you have any comments about these blinds, if you've got them and used them, and you think differently to me, by all means leave a comment down below, because I can, only, I can only tell you what I think and you might have a different opinion. So thank you again for watching.